John Havlicek, Elgin Baylor, David Robinson, Bob Pettit, Dirk Nowitzki. Next is Allen Iverson. Next is Moses Malone, Jerry West, Charles Barkley, Kevin Garnett. What's up everybody, it's Jimmy. And today we're gonna wrap up our NBA GOAT pyramid. Before I go any further, make sure to watch part one for some examples, a breakdown on the formula I used for these picks, and some perspective on the matter. You can find a link to part one in the description below. So with that out of the way, let's get right into this. Starting off with tier four, we have John Stockton. Possesses two NBA records that we may never see broken in our lifetime. And if you had to make a perfect point guard in a lab, John Stockton would be the result. Quick, intelligent, crafty, unselfish, durable. Top three point guard of all time and ran one of the most unstoppable plays the game has ever seen with this man, Carl Malone, who falls in tier four as well. Second all time in points, top three power forward of all time. And some may argue that he's the best power forward of all time, but just happened to run into an unstoppable Bulls team right in the prime of his career. Oscar Robertson, the man who accomplished the impossible 57 years ago when he averaged a triple-double for an entire season. What most people forget to mention is that for five straight seasons, Robertson was less than one rebound or one assist shy of averaging a triple-double again. This wasn't just a fluke occurrence. The man was unstoppable. He also averaged over 30 points a game six times in his career, a number only bested by Jordan and Chamberlain. Next is Kevin Durant. So three years ago, Durant wouldn't even be on this pyramid, but after two titles, two finals MVPs, and proving time and time again that he is virtually unstoppable when he is in the zone, he's earned this spot. Durant is another player that if we were creating a list strictly off of basketball skill and talent, would possibly be top 10 all time. But signing with the Warriors has stained his career, so he falls in tier four. But he does have a lot of basketball ahead of him, so he'll more than likely rise much higher in years to come. Isaiah Thomas Isaiah is an interesting player. He didn't put up absurd numbers, he didn't have flashy moves, he only played for 13 seasons. But his consistency and his drive was second to none. Absolutely relentless. Just ask Michael, the type of player that you'd hate to play against. Two-time NBA champion and one of the best point guards of all time. Julius Irving really introduced the basketball world to the athletic wing who could play above the rim. Think of an all-time great wing from the 80s to the 90s, and chances are he looked up to this man. Played his best years in the ABA, so his numbers don't reflect just how big of an impact he had on the game, but Dr. J is truly one of basketball's most legendary figures. Next is Dwayne Wade, The Flash, top three shooting guard of all time three-time NBA champion and won a finals MVP in just his third season in the league. I'm glad that he got such a warm farewell tour because I think it reminded us of how great Wade really was. Next is Scottie Pippen. Six rings, eight NBA all-defensive first-team selections, a player that could have easily been a franchise player for any other organization. I personally consider him to be the best perimeter defender of all time and one of the greatest winners of all time as well. Remember kids, six for six. And finishing off tier four, we have Stephen Curry. It's really odd to me that there are people out there who still think Curry isn't the greatest shooter of all time. Revolutionized the game, has been the cornerstone of the most winningest dynasty in modern NBA history, back-to-back -back MVPs, three titles, working on his fourth, and a laundry list of NBA records. Not too long ago, I heard someone say Curry may end his career as the best point guard in NBA history, which is just weird to hear since Magic Johnson has undoubtedly held that spot for a good 30 years now. But when it's all said and done, this is definitely a possibility. Truly a modern day basketball pioneer. And that wraps up tier four, which means next up is tier three. Now, these are players that could all be considered as top 10 all time, depending on how you wanna flip it. Guys that were the best player in the league throughout certain stretches of their career. You could also say that they were the best player for multiple championship runs. First up, we have Bill Russell. 11 championships, five time MVP. We play the game to win and he was the best winner we've ever seen. 
an absolute monster on the glass, averaging over 22 rebounds, not for a stretch of seasons, but for his entire career. Would certainly be higher on this list if it weren't for the fact that he played in an NBA with only eight teams, not something he had control over, but again, something that we have to consider. With this next player, one of the most common lines you'll hear is the most dominant player to ever play the game. And that may certainly be the truth, because next up we have Shaquille O'Neal. For about a 10 year stretch, Shaq was doing whatever he wanted to on the court and no one was stopping him. Was considered as a top 50 player all time at just 23 years old and with only 4 NBA seasons under his belt. Next we have Tim Duncan. Now, let me begin by saying the disrespect for Tim Duncan must be stopped. This man won five titles in three different decades for the same team and was arguably the best player for each and every one of those titles. Never once wavered, never once demanded a trade, never complained. Just put in the work and let his game speak for itself. I think he doesn't get as much recognition as he deserves because his numbers never really jumped out at you and of course he's Mr. Fundamental. For most casual fans, he wasn't that fun to watch. But for years, Timmy sacrificed his own numbers for team success and clearly it paid off. I consider him to be the greatest power forward of all time and because of this, he has earned a spot in tier 3. Next is Hakeem Olajuwon, had the most complete season in NBA history in 1994 when he won league MVP, defensive player of the year, won a championship and won finals MVP all in the same season. Unstoppable on offense and the best defensive player on the court all in one player. Hakeem played in the era of the big man. He faced most of the toughest skilled big men in league history and dominated every single one of them. When a big man today wants to take their game to the next level, they go to Hakeem. Next up on tier 3 is Larry Bird. It's a shame that Bird's career was cut short by injury and he didn't begin his NBA journey until he was 23, but in 13 seasons he managed to solidify himself as one of the greatest shooters of all time, a relentless competitor, and a three-time champion. Even as a 35-year-old with a crippled back, Bird averaged 24, 10, and 7 a game. Absolute monster. And rounding out tier 3 is a man whose records are so absurd, we've all just accepted the fact that they'll never be broken, and that's Wilt Chamberlain. The original Superman. There isn't much that needs to be said about Wilt. 100 points in a game, averaged 54 a season, 4 time MVP, led the league in assists one season just because he felt like it. To this day, it's still hard to really grasp the magnitude of some of his accomplishments. Now this next tier, tier 2, is for players that you could make a strong argument for being the GOAT. Players that were not only the best in the NBA for a stretch of years, but in fact the best player of their generation. Players that make you say, you know, maybe so and so is the greatest player of all time. You could say, excluding tier 1, this would be my basketball Mount Rushmore. So first up, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Going back to what I previously said, you could 100% make an argument that Kareem is the GOAT. 6 MVPs, 6 titles, 11 All-NBA defensive team selections, and the most points scored in NBA history. On paper, I think Kareem probably has the best resume of any player ever. So I guess what separates him from definitively being the GOAT is the eye test. He didn't really display the outright dominance that a few other all-time greats possessed. Yeah, he could get his points and get his numbers whenever he needed them, but some other players had that give me the damn ball and get the hell out of my way quality about them that I just didn't see in Kareem. Of course, I'm just being picky here. There are only a few players to ever play the game that you could put ahead of Kareem, so to say that he was a force is an understatement, but if I had to pinpoint why he isn't in tier 1, especially with his unbelievable resume, that might just be why. Next is Kobe Bryant. Now, Kobe's spot on this pyramid is an interesting one. Just a few years ago, I would have probably had Kobe somewhere in tier 3, maybe a high tier 3. But now, I have him firmly in tier 2. And you're more than likely thinking, what changed in the last few years to make me change my mind? And the answer to that question is perspective. 
Since Kobe's departure from the NBA, I feel like the league is missing something. Of course, no one will ever replace Kobe, but that man possessed so much grit, so much determination, so much get out the f***ing way, I got this, that you could feel that confidence just watching him go to work. I just don't see that in anyone in today's game. I see glimpses of it here and there, I see guys who can turn it on from time to time, but nothing like what Kobe brought night in and night out. Not to mention, I don't think people put enough weight on those last two rings Kobe and his Lakers won. We are currently witnessing just how grueling it could be just to get to the finals. And this man came out of the Western Conference and won back-to-back -back rings with a team that wasn't even remotely as talented as what he was working with during their initial three-peat. He didn't really have a weakness in his game. He was offensively gifted, he was defensively relentless, and the more time that passes, the more I come to appreciate the player he was. Again, just like Kareem, you could make a solid argument that Kobe is the GOAT. You could make a similar argument about Magic Johnson, and that's why he falls right here on tier 2. Of all the point guards to come in and out of the league, Magic Johnson is the best we've ever seen. Built like a power forward, handles the ball like a guard, and the vision and passing ability like nothing we've ever seen before. But of all the incredible tangible skills Magic possessed, his most valuable skill was his leadership. No one could rally a group of guys, a group of talents, a group of egos, and get them to buy into one goal and strive to achieve that goal like Magic could. A three-time MVP, five-time champion, all in 13 short seasons. And this conversation would probably be different right now if he didn't have to sit out four seasons due to his illness. And still, Magic proved that he was the greatest point guard to ever play the game. Now, this next player, and the last player on Tier 2, is a player that has set the tone for his entire generation, and that is LeBron James. When it's all said and done for LeBron, he'll more than likely climb to the top or near the top of about every major statistical category. And as his career begins to wind down, I think over the next couple years, we'll really begin to see where he truly stands all time. LeBron is a very polarizing player, meaning some people love him and some people hate him. Some people have him as their GOAT, and others don't even have him in their top 10. Personally, I have him right here, about as close as you can get to tier 1. Obviously, his shortcomings in the finals is what most people will keep coming back to, and rightfully so. Now, the reasons for these shortcomings aren't just as simple as, he lost. But with that being said, if you want to be the greatest of all time, you will be held to unbelievably high standards. And at this very moment, I see LeBron as a tier 2 player. Exceptionally gifted, transcended his era. And I will say, one thing I really admired while I sat and looked over the credentials for this video was LeBron's consistency. Excluding his rookie season, if you take any of his 15 NBA seasons and mix them up, you would not be able to tell which one is which. 15 years of razor sharp consistency. But when it comes to the greatest of all time, every player falls short of one man. And that, of course, is Michael Jordan. Basketball is a sport with a lot of different rules, a lot of different factors that come into play and an infinite amount of opinions to filter through. And still, through all of this, most basketball fans unanimously agree that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time. I like to think about it like this. Imagine you come into contact with someone who has never watched or played basketball in their entire life. Now imagine you play some classic Chicago Bulls footage, circa late 80s, early 90s. If you ask that person who they thought the best player on the court was, they would, without a doubt, immediately point to MJ. Not because he scores the most, not because of the efficiency, or any of that. Even with no context, with no predetermined notion of the game itself, Michael Jordan was so much better than everyone else around him that he just looked different. He moved different. He played different. People who didn't even watch basketball oohed and odd when they got the chance to see him in action. Some players transcend their peers, some players transcend their generation, but Mike transcended the sport altogether. 6 for 6 in the finals, 6 finals MVPs, 10 scoring titles, 5 time MVP, 9 all NBA defensive team selections, and a defensive player of the year award. But that stuff is obviously amazing. Forget all the accolades, forget the trophies, forget the awards, and just watch the man play, and that's just about all the evidence you need. 
It's funny because far too often the legend of some players proceeds and inflates the actual greatness of those players. We let our bias cloud our judgment and we remember events the way we choose to remember them. Oftentimes leading us to believe our favorite players were possibly greater than they actually were. But with Jordan, he is every bit as incredible as people say. Nearly 35 years after his rookie season and there's still nothing quite like MJ. So there it is, my basketball goat pyramid. I spent quite a bit of time breaking this down and really looked into each and every factor that made up my formula. And before we wrap this up, I wanna talk about some of these factors and go into detail about some of the small things I noticed throughout this process. As I briefly touched on in part one, the pyramid we looked at at the beginning of that video had LeBron and Michael Jordan both on tier one. And although I'm open to consider this decision, I don't really see any player on Jordan's level. I noticed that all the players on tier two were all Lakers at some point in their career. I also noticed that six of my top 11 players are big men, which is interesting. Another factor I wanna make note of is the fact that after about the first 30 or so greatest players, things get a bit messy. At the top of the pyramid, greatness and accomplishments are a bit more clear cut. But as you start to work your way down the pyramid, that line becomes a little cloudy. For example, guys that could have easily been in tier five include Steve Nash, Pete Maravich, George Gervin, Patrick Ewing, Rick Barry, and countless other players. But at some point, I just have to make a cutoff, and this is it. So here's an interesting detail. Four players on my pyramid were drafted in the 50s, four were drafted in the 60s, three in the 70s, nine in the 80s, six in the 90s, and four in the 2000s. And considering players usually peak in the decade following the one they were drafted in, I think you could accurately say that according to my pyramid, 90s basketball was the most talented or greatest era. This concept is one that has been widely accepted by quite a large percentage of NBA fans, and this pyramid certainly backs up that claim. Of course, this is just my pyramid and by no means is universally correct or even accurate, but it's worth noting nonetheless. You could consider this my top 30 all-time list. Some younger fans may look at my pyramid and note that there isn't enough representation from the 2010s. I saw a few guys mention Kawhi, Chris Paul, Harden, Westbrook, but keep things into perspective. There are only five players on my pyramid who don't have a ring. Unless you have absurd career numbers, have longevity on your side, or impacted the game in ways that don't show up in your numbers, it's basically impossible to get on this list without a ring. I think you can make an argument for any of these current NBA players. Again, it's a toss up at that tier five. And as I previously stated, if there are players that you feel deserve to be higher on this pyramid, consider that you must first demote a player before you promote one. For example, looking at the comments from yesterday's part one, it was insightful and awesome to see where you guys agreed, disagreed, what changes you would make, it was good stuff. But one thing I really wanna touch on is Dirk. It seems like the majority consensus is that Dirk should have been in tier three or at least tier four. If I had a nickel for it every time I read that comment yesterday, I wouldn't have to put ads in my videos anymore. So clearly this is a generally accepted idea, but let's think about this. There are only two power forwards ahead of Dirk and one on his level, meaning I have Dirk as the third or fourth best power forward of all time and a top 25 player of all time. I feel like that's pretty accurate. I have Kevin Garnett in tier five as well, and that seemed to be accepted by everyone. But KG played in the same era, has a championship like Dirk, has an MVP like Dirk, played the same amount of seasons, but has more rebounds, more assists, 12 more all NBA defensive team selections to Dirk's zero, a defensive player of the year, more all-star appearances, and four rebounding titles. Dirk does have a finals MVP, something that KG doesn't have, and he has more points. KG was just as good as Dirk and had just as good of a career, but no one is saying KG should be higher while a lot of people are saying Dirk should be higher. Maybe it's because Dirk just retired and that recency bias is showing. Maybe because Dirk's heroics in 2011 put him over the top. Whatever it is, I do not agree, but I understand. If you think he belongs in tier four, I'll give you that. 
Another point I want to make is that I think some viewers might have jumped to conclusions a bit too soon. Seeing Shaq and Tim Duncan in tier 3 looks absurd until you see that tier 1 and tier 2 only have a combined 5 players in them. Just some small things from yesterday that I wanted to point out. On a website called Boxton, there's a fairly extensive discussion on the pyramid featured in part one, and to give you an idea of where some people's opinions lie, here are examples of some corrections people suggested. So this guy says, dude put Steph in tier four and Harden is nowhere to be found on tier three as he should be. So Mans is suggesting James Harden should be on the same tier as Kareem, Bird, Duncan, and Bill Russell. Right. Here's a man that thinks that Dwayne Wade should be on the highest tier with Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. But of all the ill-advised opinions on the matter, this guy is pretty damn spot on. So just like anybody else, I am not the authority on this matter. This is my own personal GOAT pyramid, and I think it's pretty good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is someone too high? Is someone too low? Did I leave somebody off the list? What corrections would you make and what would your pyramid look like? Thank you for tuning in. Hope you all enjoyed this two-part series. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. New content every week. And as always, until next time.